Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. So, um, yes, today it is Friday. Um, I didn't have work the past two days. I almost spilled that because of the weather, um, which was really nice. Um, but I'm a little paranoid today to go to work just because um, there's like ice on the road. So, um, so I'm getting ready on the earlier side and what else oh yeah I, I have no idea what's gonna happen at work today because like you know i wasn't in for the past two days so it's probably gonna be busy and i don't really understand like i understand why school is busy if you miss a day like if you're in um, middle school high school elementary school like and you like are sick and you don't come into school I totally understand why it's busy the next day for you because there was material that was covered that you missed. You know, there were assignments that were given. But I don't understand why when you miss work, like, it's busy when you come back. Like, isn't everyone else supposed to pick up the slack when you're gone? And then, like, when you come back, you're just supposed to pick up, like... I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe somebody knows the answer, but I just don't, I don't understand why it's more stressful at work the next day after you miss a day. It, it shouldn't be that way. It's okay for school to be that way. It's not okay for work to be that way. At least, like, that's my opinion, but we'll see what happens. I'm not saying it's gonna be like that. I'm not saying it's not gonna be like that. We will see. <sighs> we will see, but the unknown is killing me and it made me not want to get out of bed, which was kind of hard because I had to get out of bed, you know, because I don't know the road situation. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, I will see you guys after okay, work. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I got out of work um, late. <laughs> it's Friday. Like, who wants to stay late on a Friday? <laughs> but um but anyway but yeah I stayed late um I I apologize for the vlog yesterday I don't really know what happened it didn't upload so it's getting uploaded today and then this one will get uploaded on Saturday um obviously you'll already see it at that point I was I have a couple more things to do for class um I was unable to get them finished yesterday I ended up uh collapsing slash passing out slash I, I don't know what to call it but <laughs> my body pretty much like broke down and said you better go to sleep because you can't see straight and yeah that's for sure I definitely could not see straight um anyway so yeah so I have a couple more things to finish up the big projects are out of the way I just have a couple of little things to do um yeah I was looking at rich people like people who have lots of I guess what's the right word they have many generations here in the United States they um opened a very nice business a couple of them live near me and it made me sad <laughs> at, at first i started looking these people up because i wanted to see like where they went to school obviously most of them went to harvard um and then i wanted to see what they got their undergrad in surprisingly a lot of them have a ba bachelor's of arts um you guys can go ahead and look at who i'm talking about you just search like richest person in america and then there's a list of all these people and i was just looking at their credentials that's all their credentials really aren't that big a deal i mean yeah you went to harvard business school okay but like actually from what i heard harvard is not so it's hard to get in but like it's not so um tedious once you're there they kind of just expect you to do things they don't really like force you to do things um that's what i heard from from like the medical school dental school area we'll, we will see if that's actually true <laughs> but um but anyway so yeah but like that's what that was like the big accomplishment these people did and then for the most part you know they just took over the family's company which that, that could be a positive and a negative um because like i don't know i would 
I already get mad when people are like, um, oh, you have, you know, you have to wait until you're 25 to become a manager because I was 25 when I was a manager. So like I get mad when people say stuff like that. And I'm sure that that would happen a lot. Like if my family owned a company and I was trying to move up the ranks, I'm sure that they would be like, Oh, well, I got this position when I was 30. Oh, I did this position when I was 35. And knowing me, I, I like to move fast. Like, <laughs> I don't want to wait five years to move to the next position. Um, anyway, so like, I, I guess it, uh, it's good. It didn't work out for me. Okay, it's good. But it does make me upset. Like, <sighs> I just wish I was rich. I wish I had a lot of money. I wish my family had a lot of money. Like, and I understand money doesn't give you happiness, okay? Rich people are very bitter. And, but, uh, being rich, like, it would just make life so much easier. That's the thing. Like, I, I understand that money won't bring me happiness, but being rich will make life easier. Like, I'll have power, you know what I mean? If I want to get out of work early on a Friday, I can. And nobody can talk back to me because I'm rich and I'm powerful, you know? <laughs> um, I can, whatever, like, spend whatever I want on food. I don't have to like go grocery shopping like pantry items one week and then produce the next because I can't afford to buy both at the same time. I could buy both at the same time. Heck, I could actually hire somebody to go grocery shopping for me so then I could use my time and put it towards school. Ugh. I could invest in property, which would make me even richer. I could in make larger investment choices in the stock market or in my personal low uh, risk, high risk. You know, I, I could do all the investment things that I read about. Oh, I could do it all because I'd have money. I have a significant amount to invest, which means I'd get a significant return, especially if it was a low investment. Like, ah. Uh, I wouldn't be stupid, okay? I wouldn't go buy $600 pants. I would put like $600 every week into my 401k and then it would grow, you know? Now, uh, I'm lucky if I make 600 a week. Like, anyway. I shouldn't have looked at these people up because now I'm now I'm angry. But uh, let me channel that energy into my schoolwork and I will see you guys later. Okay, friends, it is that time. I'm really um, getting into character here with the hair. <laughs> I actually never uh, wear my hair like this. Um, anyway, <sighs> it's a lot easier. I'm heating up um, my heated blanket to put on my back because like my back really hurts from shoveling and I let the water run in my shower on my back <laughs> because like it was really hurting me. Okay, so. Let's dive in to some journal questions. Um, yeah, so I did my homework that I was supposed to do, which is good. And, um, and then tomorrow I have an exciting day planned. I have to do a little bit of homework. Um, and then I think the rest of the night is just going to be relax and chill. I started, um... <sighs> I totally forget what it's called but like you know when you kind of scrape your skin for these marks here that's what I did and I should have I shouldn't have done it I should have waited until tomorrow night <laughs> because now they're gonna like come out you know what I'm saying um anyway actually you probably don't know what I'm saying because like my mind is go moving faster than my talking so today I came across it's like shadow it's called shadow work I don't I did not know what it was um and let me just read off the definition because I thought it was kind of cool uh yeah shadow work um is Oh, that's shadow. Shadow work is introspective 
uh, psycho psychological practice that anyone can do and can lead to a more fulfilling life. Uh, when you work with the shadow, you may have moments of awakening that lead to greater authenticity, creativity, and emotional freedom. I figured that was very uh, music therapy on brand. So <laughs> we'll do shadow work journal prompts. Um, let's see. See, I really like this one, but like I can't really read it. So that wouldn't really be good. Okay, here we go. 35. This one I can read a little bit better. 35 journal prompts for shadow work. Okay. While reflecting on my childhood, what makes me extremely angry or sad to this day? Oh my, that's really deep. Um, I don't know. I had a pretty good childhood. I didn't really have anything traumatizing, okay? Like, I don't know. My dad, like when, and okay, so like my childhood's kind of split between, um, I lived in New Jersey for half of my childhood and I lived in Pennsylvania for the other half. So if we think back to the New Jersey time, um, I, I remember my dad like coming to the pool late, like we had a town pool and he would come late, like in his outfit from work. I thought that that was pretty normal though, you know? Um, and yeah. And what else? One time I choked on a lifesaver and my dad tried to do the Heimlich, but he did it totally wrong. You know, when you do the Heimlich, you have to press, um, in and up and he was just pressing in. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. That doesn't really make me angry or sad. Um, one time my dad told me that if the computer didn't work, um, it was going to explode. <laughs> Yet again, that doesn't make me sad or angry. I don't know. that. I really have to dig deep into that because I have like pretty funny memories of my childhood in New Jersey. And they're mostly about my dad. Okay. My absolute dream life. How does my perfect day begin? Well... I think we all know the answer to that one. The perfect day begins at noon. <laughs> uh, how do I handle my feelings in a healthy and constructive way? Honestly, I do not. Um, I don't. I'm not a very emotional person. And when I do experience like anger or frustration, um, I kind of just like throw it out there. And yeah. <laughs> I rant a lot and then I'm like, okay, done. I'm done ranting. <laughs> um, there's this one particular topic I refuse to talk about until Sunday, I told myself, because I was starting to like obsess over it a little bit. Um, do I project certain aspects of myself onto others? No. I, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I was in a relationship with somebody who always projected so... Oh, and then I worked with clients who also always projected. So, like, I don't think so. After witnessing what... After working with both of those parties, I don't think so. Maybe somebody could correct me if I'm wrong. Did my parents provide me with everything I need? Yeah. <laughs> For sure. I still need to give them, like, a big... I, I keep saying when I get my, like, big official first paycheck, I need to give it to them. Um, I mean, I think I did give them my first official paycheck, but, like, it wasn't a big one, right? Like, I mean, when you get minimum wage, it's not a big paycheck. Um, what makes me really angry and why? When people borrow my stuff. I hate when people borrow my stuff. I hate sharing my stuff. <laughs> it still bothers. It, it used to bother me in school, like when people would ask for pencils and pens, but it bothers me now, um, especially when. <laughs> so I lived with um, two guys at one point, and they always wanted to use my like um, water heater, like that I used to heat up my tea, and they always wanted to use my crock pot and like. No, 
and I ended up hiding it. And when I lived with um two girls in college, like that, you know, they used the toaster oven and like we sh obviously like we shared pots and pans, but that didn't bother me. But when I lived with two guys, it really bothered me. Two guys I was not romantically involved with, let me clarify. Um, okay. Would I describe my childhood as happy? Yes, for sure. I have I don't really have any complaints. I mean, like, we didn't have that much money, but, like, I don't know. I didn't really, I didn't notice the lack of money until we moved to Pennsylvania. Um, I didn't notice it. It, 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 like, started to happen. Like, so, when I lived in New Jersey, we lived in, like, a blue-collar town, and then it was really close to a large city, so, um, it became, um, I guess, ritzy over time. At least that's what I've heard. Um, I don't know, I didn't really, I, I moved back there, um, for my internship, and I didn't really experience it, but, like, that's what a lot of people say, and then when we moved to Pennsylvania, um, certain towns were a little ritzy, but, like, we weren't really in it, um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that money was probably the hardest, most traumatizing thing I've, I witnessed as a child, but it wasn't really, like, my parents fault they didn't really like talk about it you know they didn't ask me for money like you know that was one of the things like I remember in high school people were like responsible for paying rent like my parents never did that you know but it was just one of those things like oh you know we can't afford it or like oh you know wait until a sale like like that kind of stuff it wasn't anything bad I don't think um what is it that makes me sad I don't know. It takes a lot to make me sad. What does make me sad? I don't know. I get sad. You know what? I get, I, I'm a little bit more, uh, my emotions kind of flare up when it's a certain time of the month. So like things that don't normally bother me will bother me. Things that don't make me sad will make me sad at, during that time, but I don't have anything in particular. It's just like a touchy subject that normally wouldn't bother me it starts to bother me, if that makes sense. Um, what do I consider the most challenging for me? Patience. I have no patience. I would be so good. You know, like my parents went, so when I was doing music therapy and doing clinicals, like back, back in the very beginning, um, everybody was like, oh, you should work with kids because you're bubbly and all this stuff. And then I worked with kids three times and I hated every single time I worked with kids. So I was like, oh my God, I hate this. I can't. And then um, the next population I tried was the medical field and I really liked it but the thing is that like in the medical music therapy most of the money is in geriatrics most of the money is in dementia most of the money is in palliative or hospice care so I was like oh I should really get into this you know and and it was good like I actually really loved playing World War One, World War Two music and then like playing classical like Beethoven you know, I, I mean I don't like Beethoven but like I'll play it for music therapy purposes it's fine it's like classic rock I don't really like classic rock but I rather play classic rock in a session than play kids songs if, so um yeah so anyway I so I liked I liked a lot about working with the geriatric population working with um <sighs> dementia Alzheimer's it was just the patience <laughs> that really got to me like I actually a lot of people say this is gonna sound terrible but a lot of people can't work in hospice because like they develop a relationship with the patient and then something happens to the patient you know and then they get all distraught that did not bother me like <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know, it was, it was weird could, because you didn't have a closing session, but then, like, I don't know, you just moved on. That wasn't the problem. The problem was the patience. Like, I could, I still to this day would get upset 
like just doing I would I had to do like the same session over and over again every week it was the same session and like this was like in the beginning of like my music therapy um career so I and I, I remember saying this like if I had kids if I had a husband you know it would be different like I, it wouldn't bother me doing the same session over and over every week it would make it very easy but because like I was new to the field and I wanted to explore new things and like I wanted you know I didn't really have I didn't I wasn't working on a master's, I wasn't living with anybody, you know, like, I, I just, I wanted to try new things musically, and, I, and I felt like I couldn't, I felt like I had to stick to the same thing and do it over and over again, and it was always the same result, but the patients didn't know that it was the same result, anyway, that was very challenging for me. <laughs> And pa patience is still very challenging, not necessarily like in the same regard, but like when I first started working in geriatrics, um, the patience was the issue, not necessarily the patients passing away. Um, have I forgiven myself? There's two more questions. Have I forgiven myself? <laughs> forgiven myself about what? Like... I don't know. Sometimes I'll think back to things I used to say and they were really mean, but I I wasn't wrong. <laughs> you know, um maybe maybe I would do certain things differently. Like sometimes in relationships it's like, "Oh, I should have explained myself a little more. Oh, I should have been more open. Um I shouldn't have been so, I guess, defensive." But then it's like, oh, live and learn, you know? I don't know. I, I, I've i never really regretted anything. I Like, even, I, you know, I'm getting an MBA, and people are like, oh, do you wish you were a business undergrad? No. <laughs> because, like, being a business undergrad, not being a business undergrad, it really did not affect my application to get into an MBA program. Now, if I was competing for, I don't know, a specific ma like managerial or executive manager one year program or a super intensive study, like then okay, yes, but I wasn't. I was applying for a regular MBA certification in finance. So like, you, I don't know, you just had to get like a certain GPA and sometimes you had to take the GMAT, sometimes you had to take the GREs, like it really depended, but it was more based on experience getting into an MBA program for me. I did not feel, I don't, anyway, long story short, I don't feel any regrets <laughs> towards anything. Have I forgiven all the people who ever hurt me? That is a no. <laughs> There's lots of people who hurt me, and I'm still mad about it. <laughs> but I don't know. I think that's what happens when you're... Like, I feel like that happens with all humans, you know? I, I mean, as time goes on, we forgive, but I don't know. So, some of these people have said really mean things to me and did it on purpose or did it maliciously. So, like, no, I don't forgive you. And I don't see that as a problem, but maybe it is. Okay, thanks for joining me guys today. It's actually like, I feel like I'm in a better mood because I can, you know, post this the next day. It, it like, it's a lot less stressful. Um, yeah. So thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.